with the best you got him for a breast. Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world of outlaws. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. It's been a changing of the guard here in the Lotus 49 community, and yet one of those guards already knows the way to the crown. Rob Olenek managed a championship once already and seems set to try and claim his second, but to do so, first he must climb a mountain. Specifically, he must climb Mount Panorama, and he must do it 16 times. But a slew of other drivers out there and ready to try and beat him to it. We'll see who gets to be king of the mountain today as we get ready to watch round four of the Lotus 49 Grand Prix Legend Series. And you'll see it all live on the Global Sim Racing Channel and the iRacing Esports Network. Hi, I'm Joe Peak, and with me in the booth is multi-time Grand Prix Legends champion Mick Claridge, and behind the scenes is our director Sean Crackers Ambrose. He's using cameras, of course, provided by Dougie Beer. Mick, I'd almost say that before the Nurburgring, uh, combining this track with a 49 was kind of seen as the test of iRacing bravery. Does that seem fair? Yeah, Joe, you're spot on there. Uh, 16 laps of a four mile circuit doesn't sound too bad, does it? 23 turns, that sounds normal. But Joe, you and I have raced here in the 49 before, and I think we both agree, most of those turns really are the toughest on the planet. Bathurst really is legendary for the Aussies, and with the combination today of the Lotus 49, makes it one of Sim Race's toughest challenges. Some of those challenges for our drivers today will be, believe it or not, mountain straight from turn one to turn two. If you're full throttle all the way down there, the front of the car will actually get airborne. If you make it through that, you're onto the mountain. And Joe, it's all about keeping it clean, hitting your marks, and most importantly, maximizing track limits, which at Bathurst is much easier said than done. If you've made it to the forest elbow, your ultimate wake up call will be a nice chunk of wheel spin in top gear at 170 miles an hour as you run down Conrad Strait. 16 laps, Joe, of sheer hell for the guys today. So, let's jump on board the Lotus GSR C49 for one of the wildest rides in sim racing. All right, we're in the GSRC Lotus 49, so let's do a lap around Bathurst. Coming down to Hell Corner, it's incredibly critical that you don't outbreak yourself into this bend. Being able to get to the power early out of that first turn will affect your lap time greatly as you climb up the mountain straight. Not to mention, a good exit will help protect you from an attack. Now, over the hill, the car tends to pull left if you shift into fifth. Let it bounce off the limiter and shift up after the hump. After that, you'll be breaking uphill into Griffin's Bend, so get the car to the left and put out the anchors. Being smooth to the power will pay off since you'll be turning and accelerating out of here. Something easier said than done. Switch sides quickly, and as we come up to the cutting, remember that not being able to brake in a straight line will mean you've got a lift to ease into this double apex corner. Try to really line the car up for the exit. The line through quarry isn't quite flat out, but swing wide because you'll need the entire track over the rise into Reed Park. From here, treat all those little kinks in the track as one long arc. You'll be feathering the throttle through Frog Hollow and eventually Salmon Park. Just as you come over the rise, tap the brakes and turn in early to get the car to grip through McPhillamy Park. Get on the power briefly, bring the car to the left, and then try your best to brake as the car gets light over Skyline. You'll be slowing and steering your way through these steep downhill S's, hopefully managing to line your car up for the dipper. 
From there, you'll get another little squirt of the gas across the top of the mountain before you find yourself braking for the frustrating forest elbow. The drop tends to make it hard to slow the car up. Just like Hell Corner, the best traction acceleration is what you're really aiming for. We're now on the opposite side from before, blasting down the Conrod straight. But the Lotus is so fast and powerful that staying on the throttle can sometimes send the car out of sorts over the big crest. Letting off the 80% throttle doesn't really lose you any time and keeps the car safe. Then comes the infamous chase. Tap the brakes, turn it in, then bring the car to the right as you really stop the binders. This is easily going to be one of the most popular overtaking spots. The track rises, making it tough to get back to the power quickly. Once you've got it fully down though, you're heading towards Murray's Corner. The 49 can take that inside curb better than most cars, but for the ideal run, try not to clobber it. Hopefully, you kept it all together and have now finished a lap around Bathurst. There you see from the driver's perspective just how hairy it can be to try and get around this place as my, uh, Mick was describing. Let's take a look at the driver's championship, though, the F1 championship, with Olenek having taken two wins so far this season. Of course, he's leading by a fair amount. And, well, it's not just his pace that is causing the gaps that you see there. A lot of other drivers up at the top have been missing races. Uh, Marco Kika, one of the surprises, though, who uh, has continued to improve season after season and thus far has gotten himself up into the top five there with the jump up five positions even uh, to climb into fourth thus far. Let's see if he can keep that momentum. Sightbegger, one of those that missed out last week, of course. Uh, of course, we also have the F2 championship. We always talk, Mick, about how the F1 has been jumbled around, but we have new names down in that F2 that uh, have been coming into play as well, it seems. That's right. Um... We're looking at David Rossi, who's leading out at 75 points. Um, 25 points behind is Pascal Tremblay, and that's a bit misleading because he's only done one, uh, sorry, two races this season, uh, whereas David's done all three. Um, Don Good's looking good as well. Uh, he's done all the races. Uh, he's back in third there. Bill Tyler's here today as well. In fact, all the top five are here today, uh, just looking at the list. Um, it's looking tight. Um, it's going to be a hell of a season, I think, for the for the F2 battle, uh, Joe. Um, really competitive. Certainly has been. In fact, there's been some fights to be the first to finish in that F2, even on track that we've seen thus far. Let's take a look at the Constructors' Championship as well. Uh, of course, Olenek, with the uh, US points that he's been contributing, is leading the way. But the UK jumping up into second place. Rossi's been one of those that has been putting points in. Then you see Price and Haycox in there as well. Sightfigure for Austria uh, has been uh, bringing them into the fore. I think this is the first time we've seen Austria in the, uh, the points in the Nations Cup. Now, Finland, uh, from Kika's contributions, also finds its way into the top five and... Uh, uh, Pavlowski and Luke will drop one position, unfortunately, there with Germany. Now, let's take a look at the race details as well. Mick, uh, we talked about the 16 laps. But what else is in store here today at this track? Yeah, well, this is, like I said, Joe, this is round four of 12. And you can see up there, you've got the two little raindrops. That means there's two drop weeks this uh, series. Um, that means the guys can... Uh, dropped their worst uh, races out of the whole series. Um, race distance today is 16 laps. And like I said earlier, Joe, this is, is 16 laps of hell um, for the guys. Uh, setups are open. Um, if I was running today, I'd err on the caution uh, and make the car as easy as I could to, to run it. Um, I think that's the way the guys are going to run it today. And the points pay out to 25th, as you can see, guys. Uh, that means I think every yeah everyone's going to be in the points today. So. Uh, good points up for today. Yep. So finishing will be critical for sure, which is another thing that's probably easier said than done. Uh, one thing that's very easy is, of course, subscribing. All you got to do to do that here on IESN is either go to their YouTube page or just below this video here on YouTube. If you look and see a big red button that says subscribe, you haven't done it yet, click that. You won't miss a moment here on the iRacing eSports Network. You can see the pole has been changing hands up in the upper right-hand corner, but it has gone back to Rob Olenek, who continues his slate of speed. Uh, and he's got two tenths over a driver you were talking to me a little bit about uh, in practice, Mick, uh, Peter Mikus. 
Yeah, Peter was there on Thursday. Um, he was right there on pace. Um, really good driver. I think he had a little mess up in one of the um, laps on Thursday, but but yeah, I mean, I, I saw his pace straight away. I'm not shocked at all that he's up there now at the top, in the, in the top there. It's only two temps away from Rob. And talking about the F2 championship, I see Pascal Tremblay had a wreck on his lap, so he unfortunately was is going to have to start from the back without a qualifying time this is coker that we're watching coming around the final corner his second lap is an improvement by about seven tenths but he will stay in eighth place it is looking like a wide spread on lap times around here oh peter makers just took pole position Ooh. uh two tenths ahead of rob wow i was right about this guy <laughs> apparently I mean, he was he was running top five in previous races this season on the broadcast, but this is something else. Now, Olenek has time to respond. He's coming down the Conrad straight right now, and he's got a 2018. So that is about a tenth and a half off of Miku's fastest time. Comes down into the chase. Let's see if he can manage to finish up a quick one here. It's looking tidy through there. Just one more corner to get right, Mick. I've been watching Rob for this lap. He's absolutely on the limit. He was really using the track limits on over the mountain there. Just one corner to go now. Gets a nice entry. Hard on the power now. Second gear, third gear. Let's see where it gets him. Oh, he still didn't get it. He's just a tenth away. Wow, that is going to be tight. What about Uwe Tragrade? He's been quick lately. He's also coming through the chase. And right now he is in third on the qualifying sheets. He's about three tenths off of the pole, but as we've seen, the spread is wide, so there could be time on the board for him. Let's see what he's got as he comes out of Murray's. That 202 flat improves to a 2018, and that unfortunately does not improve his position. Tight at the top, Joe. There. It is one thing I have to say. Um, yeah, sorry. One thing I did want to say about Uva. Uh, he's back for the rest of the season, so. Um, Guy's going to be watching in the mirrors for this guy. Certainly. So let's go through our starting grid for today. Peter Mikus on the pole with Rob Olenek starting second. Train grade in third. The outside of row two belongs to Kika. Ian Haycox only got one lap in. He was another one that wrecked out, unfortunately. And he'll start fifth. Bill Tyler's P6 and Dave Rossi seventh. Outside of row four belongs to Colin Coker. Andre Bruno will start ninth. Top 10 Mick is rounded out by Brian Molitor. Yeah, and that looks like everyone who's, uh, no one else has got a lap in, I think. Um, Colin Brantley follows Andrew Eng, and then Matt Yeomans, Don Good, he's starting on the grid. Great to see him there. Julia Fogg, Colin, he's there. Pascal running for a Tron play, that's a bad result for him. He's looking to chase that F2's title in 16th. And back row Bob is there in 17th. <laughs> back row, I love that. I haven't heard him called that. Uh, uh, does he take kindly to that name? <laughs> <laughs> it was his name, Joe. He gave me that name. I love it. I love it. We'll have to remember that one then. All right. They are gridding up right now. You can see lovely, colorful fields out there of Lotus 49s here at Mount Panorama. And green flags are out as uh, Peter Miku's off the line. Not looking that great with Rob Olenek coming around the outside. But can he finish the job the long way around? Look at the acceleration that he gets. Lead goes to Rob Olenek in the very first corner. And already Train Gray trying to challenge to take second away from Peter. Train Gray's backed out of it. Let's see how they are over the hump there. Nice and easy. No one's going for it there in the top three. Nice, nice wide line into turn two for Rob and Pete Nickers. Yeah, that's so disappointing for him to lose the lead on the first corner there like that. And everybody got single file by the time they got to Griffin's. This is the mountain portion of the track coming up through the cutting now. Very difficult to go side by side and doesn't seem like many are willing to try and uh, risk it here on the first lap. So your order is Olenek, Nikus, Train Grade, Kika and Haycox for your top five. Oh, Rob was really wide out of the corner there. And so, oh, and he's done it again as well there. And he's heading down into the section with the dipper now. Let's see how they get through. I'm just sitting on board with Uber as they run down here. Everyone seems to be nice and taking it easy, really, on this first lap. Uh, all three of the cars up in the lead nicely through there. 
and then a down to Forest Elbow, who was a little bit loose all over the place there, a little tiny bit, but how's your exit? Peter Mickers is right on Rob's rear now. And he's gonna get the slipstream at about two tenths behind him. They start to pick up speed. Is this gonna be enough for Peter though? Behind them, don't forget about Trangrade. If these two start fighting, that could close him back in for that half second back. Does not gain enough as they now break for the chase, but wow, Peter looking strong on the binders as he closes in. Yeah, this guy's got some real talent. Um, just remember guys, this is his second race in this car. Um, I'd even call Rob a veteran now this series. Um, to have a guy like this just starting out on, on your gearbox, uh, Rob must be, I know what he's thinking, he's thinking, who the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> And behind them, don't forget that it's a pretty decent gap to Kika. He's already two and a half seconds behind on the first time round. So these three breaking away as they're gonna hit the hump for the second time. Up and over and all three looking clean. Yeah, a bit of a gap to over now, but Peter Nickers is all over Rob here. Rob actually hit the curb there. That'll upset his car on the exit. As they go now up the hill, slightly up the hill, just hold it in tight, Rob. Yeah, they're all equal for them. Cutting. Yeah, he was a bit defensive. Yeah, and his, his Uber's caught up a bit there, hasn't he, as well? Starting to close together. Now coming up towards one of the highest portions on the track. Swinging through Frog Hollow up towards McPhillamy Park. Oh, and wide once again for Olenek. He catches a slide, though. And no opportunity for Mikus yet again. He's going to have to catch him in a different place. How far back do you get the slipstream from on the mountain and, and Conrad Straits in these cars? There's another, uh, sorry, another slide from Olenek. Yeah, that was a big one, wasn't it, Joel? I'm surprised. Oh, <laughs> he was well lucky there to make it through there. Um, the toe's huge in this car. Um, it's a good two seconds back. Um, you'll still get a toe from a couple of seconds. So, I mean, these three now, they're right together. And Peter Mickers is always going on the left. He's always, yeah, he's going to get this. Rob must have had a really bad exit there. Yeah, I don't think he even needed the toe, but now he's stalling out. And Rob's starting to pull ahead once again. I wonder if there's different gearing on these two cars. Backs out of it in the braking for the chase. Yeah, it looked like he actually backed out of it on purpose there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe he's still getting used to the car. Maybe he just wants to, uh, you know, calm himself down and keep calm. And, you know, I don't know. He had it there. It was on a plate for him. And keep calm and try to keep the car on the track as they come across. That time it was Uwe who managed to get the quickest lap of the three of them, getting a double toe down the straight. Uh, apologies to the rest of the field for having stuck with this, but the top three is separated by essentially half a second between them and have been since the drop of the green. The thing I'm expecting from Uwe today is to get faster as he goes along. He doesn't run this car that often now, and he probably would have just joined the practice session, and that would have been the first running he's done this week. So, oh, and Peter Mick has really lost the rear end there. Um, he gathered it up nicely there. Didn't really seem to lose much time to Rob there. But let's see how Rob goes through this corner. So the last two laps, he's lost the back end there and ran really wide. Looks like he's a bit tidier this time though. This has certainly been his Achilles heel. And that looks a little bit better. This time it's Peter Mikus who loses a little ground now through McPhillamy Park. And that is the corner that Olenek goes a little bit wide through. Plunging over Skyline down into the S's and eventually getting it woed up for the dipper. Definitely looking more under control for that tiger colored car. So Peter Mikus is going to have to try and get a little bit closer as they hit Forest Elbow. Yeah, the nerves are calming down, I think, now. They've done two or three laps, and it's nice and calm in the cockpit, as calm as it can be. But you're on the limit here. I mean, these three guys are on the limit of this car now, coming down here. Who's going to want to get a slide? No, no sliding going on over the hump there, but Peter Mikus is he's, he's keeping on it. He's got the pace today. Behind them, we got a side-by-side -side action with Ian Haycox and Marco Kika. Kika's got the inside. Haycox, who's trying to take this fourth place away, it was not successful this time, but he's giving that number three something to think about. Yeah, Ian's done a lot of practice this week in the car. Um, I expect him to be pretty quick today. 
Bit of a gap now to Marco. Yeah. He certainly fell off coming off of Murray's, but he's going to get more opportunities out of hell and up the mountain straight. Ian Haycox may be a little bit too far back to do anything, at least this time, but at least continuing to apply the pressure. It's been all awful close as well uh, down in night between Bruno and Aang. Uh, those two have been trying to sort that one out. A chance here for Aang to do something up into Griffins if he's brave. I don't know about this, though. Yeah, Andre has taken a real defensive line there going into the corner there. Andrew Aang's a little slow off the exit now. Falls back, gives just himself watching. some space, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, Joe, I was just watching Pascal uh, uh, as he went through there. Um, he looks like he's slowly getting through the field now from the terrible qualifying. He's managed to reach 11th place. Uh, again, qualified 16th out of 17 cars, so that is a decent climb. No rush. Attrition, always a big factor here, Mick, so I, I imagine... As time goes on, he'll probably scalp a few without having to pass anybody. Did we have any crashes on lap one? I don't think we did. Oh, we haven't yet. Amazingly, all 17 are still running. So they're, they've got a good, uh, a good amount going right now. Still haven't separated with that podium. Olenek, Mikus, Trangerade, nose to tail. They're coming around to complete another lap. Around the left hand, all three of them go. Rob bounce all over the curb there. Nice exits from all three of them though. Over the start finishing line. Down into turn one. Get it down. Second gear. Hard on the power now. Now who's got the guts to keep their foot down all the way over this hump? It does gain you a little bit of time if you do that, but Joe, you can't land the car. <laughs> Oh, I know very well that <laughs> I've ended races, ended practice sessions so many times trying to find that 10th. All three of them were successful this time. Mikus not looking like he likes Griffin's Bend. That's the second time we've seen him drop back through that right-hander. Oh, yeah, he, oh, oh, and he's all out of break. shape. He managed to oh. catch it through the cutting, but that was costly. Let's look at that a second time here, Mick. Yeah, it looks like he just snatched the brake, the front left brake there as uh, as he went into the corner there. That was um, that was a nice save, to be honest with you. He was counter-steering very early and thankfully had enough track to his right to catch it. And Trangrade was not able to do anything with that. And I talked about attrition. We got our first big accident. Looks like that was Colin Coker. was turned around after the cutting and this was uh, a bit of a different incident from what we saw with Mikus he got on the throttle a little too strong unfortunately I think Colin Bentley was right behind him watching from Bentley's perspective here and it gooses it oh yeah yeah he just lost the rear end coming out and who was that that just scooted through there? It's your man, Pascal. It's Pascal Tremblay got through ha! the two of them there. What I say? <laughs> that gives him ninth place with that move. So not a bad job from Tremblay to manage to avoid disaster there. It's, I mean, it's something we haven't talked about in the race yet is that the track can get blocked so easily. Even we saw in just a single car incident there. Yeah, and if it does... Um... You'll be making a new video, won't you, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, speaking of, of problems for drivers, though, I see Trey Gray dropped off of Mikus, and I think this may have happened into Hell Corner. It might have... Let me see. Let me see exactly what happened. If this is worth looking at, yeah, it, we might want an onboard here from the Norwegian. He lost a ton of time once again. Through the car just starting to lose grip here. We've, we've got the replay up now. Turns the car in. The car wants to turn too much. Wow, another good catch. Yeah, if anyone can save a car when it's doing that, it's over. <laughs> That's for sure. He's got plenty of practice going sideways. 
but this is costly. He's now a second and a half back from Mikus. Uh, for them being really tied nose to tail for much of the first few laps, they have now all three spread apart. Oh, and Brian Molitor seems to have entered the pits. And once again, it's the cutting. The number seven also spinning around and finding the wall. Let's take a look at the replay here. Coming out of Griffin's up towards the double left-hander. And it's the second portion where the tail just starts to go around just noses it in yeah it's just a question of leaving your braking um he's just left his braking slightly too late there and that's all that can happen when you do that um there's nothing you can do about it As we come back live to second place well we thought that ove had lost some time well he's regained it very quickly it's back down to half a second so one second quicker essentially than miku's that time around and this time, wide once again, uh, Uwe, you, you talked about this before the race. It seems like sometimes he overdrives the car. Does that look like what's happening currently? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of uh, a lack of practice as well, Joe. Um, like I said before, he's he's probably not, um, not really dialed into the track in the car yet today. We come back to fifth place, Ian Haycox riding on board, looking over his shoulder. Up ahead, that is still Marco Kika, who successfully withheld him just outside the podium. They both know if something happens to the leaders that they could be spraying the champagne today. A little bit wide coming up through the cutting, and that causes a big checkup for Haycox. Can't do anything with it, but still now he is underneath the gearbox. Yeah, and I was just watching as we was watching on board there. Um, really smooth with the steering wheel, Ian. Is Ian. Um, it's a really nice driving style. Um, and it paid dividends at this place. Um, if you can stop the car sliding around and losing the rear end here, there, and everywhere, you know, your tires, temperatures, they stay nice and cool. And you're able to actually sort of push a bit harder. Looks like Marco's got a bit of a gap now as they go through the depot, just a slight gap. Ian runs a little bit wide there over the grass as they go down there. Down the forest elbow, yeah, Marco's got a nice gap though coming out of here now. Looking a little bit farther back, David Rossi, our leader in the F2 championship, trying to see if he can do anything with the number 11. They come out of Forest Elbow, but Tyler looking very good on the throttle as he starts to stretch away from the number six. Yeah, again, really nice driving style from David Rossi today. Um, just watching the car wiggle as he goes over that hump there on Conrad Straight. Down into the chase now. Nice entry, looks like nice entry for both from David Ross. He's a bit tight going there, but bounces over the curb nicely. Nice exit for both of them. Gap's tightened up a little bit, hasn't it, Joe, there? Yeah, it looked like he liked the chase that time through, did Rossi. Coming through Murray's to complete another lap. Off the corner, once again, losing out as that accordion stretches apart. Bill Tyler keeping himself safe with great acceleration. Just doesn't seem like coming off the corners, David Rossi looking very good today at all. Yeah, and I was just watching him as he turned into the first turn there. He put a whole load of steering lock in and that does nothing but just overheats your front tires. So when you get down to this braking zone now, you find it tough. Uh, I don't know what ratio he's using for his steering, but he's, he is using a lot of steering lock as he drives around. We got... Uh... Some nice action going on here back between, I believe this is Yeomans and Good, chasing him for 11th place. Wonder if we'll see any lap traffic, actually. We do have Robert Reynolds already a lap down. And, uh, well, it looks like Fort Colin is still about half a lap ahead, so I'm not sure that they'll get to them, at least not until very late in the race. First, Coker. No, no, Coker, it looks like he is uh, still in the pits. So he might be trying to get back out there. He could also become lap traffic. And lap traffic is definitely some uh, definitely something you do not want on this track, Mick, uh, at least on the mountain portion. 
board with Ove Trangrade. Fell back from Mikus just for a moment. About six tenths behind him. Mikus, interestingly here, Mick, he's he's still about a second and a half from Olenek. Ever since he had a couple of those mistakes that we saw, he's not been able to draw him back in. No, that's right. I mean, I, I just can't emphasize how much I'm impressed with this guy. This guy has raced, you know, a couple of races now. And um, he's on pace with the veterans that have been here for years. Yeah, experience seems to count a lot in this car. So I wonder if Peter's been practicing quite a bit while we weren't looking. Now down to eight laps to go. We're halfway through this thing. We've lost three drivers. It's Coker, Molitor, Bentley. All are in the pits getting repairs, so they could come back. As we take a glance at Bill Tyler still fending off David Rossi coming up over the mountain portion. Tyler nice and tidy, tucked down to the apex through the cutting. Now they come through Quarry up to Frog Hollow. Yeah, Tyler's really using the track limits really nicely today. They're just passing the back marker. Is that, is that Bob? Oh, David yeah, Rossi. Oh, he spun. He spun oh, it. No. He's out of the wall. He didn't hit anything. And he yeah, gets it, it going without losing a position. It just it just threw him off seeing the car there slower. It's so annoying. I've done that myself a few times. Horrible, that is. Yeah, Robbie didn't do anything wrong at all. It seems just unfortunate for the number six with his concentration interrupted. He's now got seven and a half seconds to make up to get to Tyler. That's going to be a pretty hard ask as we watch that on the Boom. Goodness, he is incredibly lucky he managed to keep it out of the wall. Yeah, really lucky. I just have to uh, say a shout out to Robert. He, I know we joke, but he, he is one of the best uh, awareness guys on the track. Um, he might not have the pace, but he really knows how to uh, tell guys what to do, what he wants them to do as they pass, or you know where he's going to be. And it's really good to see. You know, he's got he's a full awareness. That guy um, might be back row Bob, but he's one of the best on there. I saw up at the upper right of your screen that Trangrade just set the fastest lap of the race. And just as we were talking about Mikus not being able to catch Olenek, he's cut that down to three-tenths of a second, and the race is back on. As they come now through Corey once again. This is becoming a familiar sight with these three. Olenek already has two wins on the cards out of three races. Can he make it a hat trick today? Oh, Uber hit the wall. Deny him. Sorry, Joe. Uber just bounced off the wall there just as I was going. I was just about to say how much Uber uses the track limits to his advantage and uh, just went a little bit too far there. Yeah, we saw it on the replay right there. Yeah, no damage, though. His steering wheel's nice and straight. And should get away with that glance. Now out of Forrest's elbow. Another spot where you got to get up against the edge of the circuit down the hill they plunge and Miku's not looking quite close enough for this one. Oh, did we lose Ian Haycox? For some reason Ian Haycox in the pits. This happened quite a bit ago. I don't think we'll be able to get the replay but I'm trying to find out what exactly happened to him and it was a lone car incident into the dipper through the S's. Let's see, we might be able to pull it up here. Oh, and you know what? He was sent on his lid. That's why he had to take a tow. Looks like uh, a little bit farther back. Here we go. Now we've found it right here. Great job by our director managing to pull this one up. Around she goes. Oh, and he just, he hit the tires with his tire, and that's what sent it up and over. Yeah, so. and that's what we've been saying all along, Joe. That's how easy it is around here. It's so hard. He's but trying to limp he... back now. Look at the car. It's all over the place. Park it, Ian. Oh, he's... Yeah, yeah. He, he, he thought he could take minimum minimal uh, repairs and get it back out, and it is not working. Meanwhile, back to Tremblay. Andrew Ang is now behind Tim. 
And this is for seventh position as they come through Hell Corner and onto the mountain straight. Tremblay must have recently gotten by as he's now up to seventh. Ang trying not to let him get away with it. But Andrew himself also coming forward quite well. Qualified 12th and is now in P8. Yeah, Tremblay, what a drive. Um, just as you said, Joe, he's, uh, he's really taken advantage of everyone else's problems today. And here's what's wild is Rossi is the one he's chasing in the F2 championship. Well, guess who's the next car up for him? It's David Rossi, but oh, he's I was got just ten looking at yeah, I was just looking at yeah, it's a bit of a gap there, but it still could happen. You never know what's going to happen, you know, with David Rossi. He needs to keep it clean and one spin, and that 10 second gap's gone. Well, we've already seen one spin, so it's certainly not out of the cards. He could have another mistake, and Pascal could try to capitalize. So we watch Rossi himself plunge down through the dipper and towards. Forest elbow here. I always thought this was one of the hardest corners to break for this forest elbow. Forest elbow is really tough, Joe. It's uh, third gear out of the dipper. As you go down the hill, it's third gear. Come down that hill and you just have to feather the brake pedal and get down into second gear and you have to get it in tight. And, you know, this car slides around everywhere. So on the exit, it's sliding and you have to just time that slide to the exit wall of forest elbow just to get a good run. And it's so easy to mess up there. I've done it a few times myself. I could say that a lot today. <laughs> I've done it uh, more than a few times myself. Peter Vikus, who was close to Olenek, drops back to about nine tenths of a second. Trangarade still on top of him. It almost looks like this fight for the lead is, is a battle of who can make the least mistakes up here. Yeah, as, as you just say that, it looks like Mikus just ran wide through the corner there all over the white line there on the track limits for all three of them. Rob's got a nice little cushion now. That means he won't be looking in his mirror quite so much to see where Peter is. Uber now finding it hard to stay on the gearbox there. Down through the dipper they go. Second gear, get it turned in. Third gear now, hard on the power. Back down to second gear, just as we were just saying, Joe, all oh, Uber's all over the place there. Fast hands over there on the exit, bring it out to the wall. Uber loses the rear end there. Down the Conrad straight they go. And that means that he's now five tenths behind Mikus, who himself gained about two tenths over the mountain. It's down to seven tenths behind Rob Olenek. As they are going to be four laps to go this time by. All getting on the binders as they woe it up for the chase. Up and out of that chicane. A lot of curb there for Rob Olenek. He is certainly pushing hard to see what he can do. As Ove Trangrade closes it down to win three tenths of a second. Another slide from Mikus coming out of Murray's corner. A good exit out of turn one for Trangrade could set him up well. Yeah, I was just watching over as he went over the curbs through the chase there as well. But he he hit the curb hard, but he'd done it nicely. And it was a real nice move. That's what gave him the... Um, advantage there but yeah as you see now going up first straight over the mountain straight over the hump now oh over does he jumps it a little bit hard on the brakes now into the right hander it just seems like there's nothing between these guys and i think you're right joe is um you know little mistakes are keeping this gap quite tight you know and then it will stretch out again it's all oh, peter mickers has lost a rear end again there so he's run wide so is over and yeah, this is the story of the race so far. There's there's mistakes happening for all three of these guys. For those wondering and watching over from Australia, uh, we only had two Aussies here today, Colin Coker and Matt Yeomans. And the only one still running is Yeomans. So right now, uh, sadly, not having a lot of local representation like we're used to having as we put the cameras on the number 10 and 10th. Back to the one we were expecting and hoping for was Ben Zoko, who you got to race against uh, earlier this week, Mick. Or at least I thought you said you got to race against him. Um, I didn't race him. I saw him in a race. Um, he won it. Um, he won it from pole position. Um, ben, uh, hopefully, he's going to be back for a lot of the races this series, uh, this season, rather. Um, it's going to be great to see him race because he's really sorted himself out this season with pace-wise. Um, so yeah, looking forward to see more of Ben. In that case, you were there in spirit as, well, down into the chase. 
Miku's looking a little bit shaky, and once again, Trangrade closing up down to within those three tenths of a second. This seems to be one of the better portions of the track for the Norwegian. Now come out of the final corner to cross the line. Three to go now. Looks like they're coming up on a back marker. Quite, can't quite see who that is. Uh, all over. Oh, hold on to it, mate. Yeah, he's got it. <laughs> oh, Joe. My heart. <laughs> I don't know how he does it from within the cockpit. I would be a mess. That is Colin Bentley who is ahead. He's brought the car back out after his repairs. Uh, Coker is back out there as well. Ian Haycock still taking some more repairs. Molitor, the only one to have officially left the session uh, of our 17 driver. Mikas was so wide through the corner there, through turn two there. I can't believe Uber didn't, um, wasn't able to get the uh, pass done there. But he's right on him now. And there's a gap to Rob, so Mikas is seriously looking in his mirror now at the moment. Yeah, this has been great for Olenek up to about a second and a half ahead of him, so it's becoming a battle for second instead. They come up to that lap traffic. Yeah, and it's Olenek right where they... Up quite a bit. Yeah, he did. It's right where they don't want it, right in the middle of the dipper. You don't want to be stuck behind a car here. Whoa. Oh, it's getting tight. Oh! Wow! And they all get through it. That was Bentley pulling off at the same time that Robert Reynolds also was trying to get over to the side. The two made a little bit of contact. Everybody through. Joe, was that officially free wide through the dipper there? It may have been. <laughs> Let's watch <laughs> oh, here from above. This will give us a clear view. There you see the two lapped cars in amongst them. And of course, the hillsides are getting out of the way. Yeah, that was three wide. I don't think we've ever seen three wide through that corner. I've never seen three wide through that. Did they all make it? They did. Everybody's through and still running amazingly. Great, great heads up by all five drivers. Just incredible. So with now two laps to go, Olenek has lost a bit of that lead due to the lap traffic. It's down to one second and Trangrade still within half a second of Peter Mikus. Rob going for the toe there. I don't know who's in front of him. There's another back marker, but Rob's going for the toe. He's got past now. Over the hump they go, under the pedders bridge. Hit your brake mark, right on the 250 board. Oh, and his engine. Someone's blown an engine. Oh, that's Mikus. Mikus, oh no, and Ove gets into him. He hits the wall and the Mikus. Peter's off the track now, but Ove is limping. The car is crabbing. Oh, disaster for the Norwegian with just two laps to go. That is such a shame. That's got to be a downshift as he breaks. The, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm on board now with me because yeah, the rev limiter went way up there just as he downshifted. That's such a shame to have that happen. Um, everyone's always worrying about the walls and the undulation and to have an engine blow to take you out of the race. It doesn't get any worse, does it? And, and poor Ove was doing his best to try and avoid it, but uh, there's just so little room on this track. Unfortunately, he damaged his suspension. We're going to watch from Peter's perspective now. Wonder, wonder if it, he was distracted a bit by Coker at the head and just shifted, downshifted too early. Yeah, could have been. Yeah. Andrew Ang is such in a the pits as well. Checking to see what happened to him. Uh, it's a little long ago, but he had a problem for his elbow, so he's driven back to the pits. In the meantime, white flag is going to be coming out for Olenek. And in all of this, we haven't covered yet that it is Kika who takes advantage of others' woes. He will get a second place if he can keep it on track. And get this, Bill Tyler manages to go from six now up to the podium. Rossi is going to be kicking himself for that mistake because he's closed it in to within four seconds, but he is nowhere near to being able to overtake him. Wow, that's F2 championship, Joe. It's just going to get better and better and better, ain't it? It certainly is. Bill Tyler needs to pat himself on the back once he comes around and takes the checkered flag today. This has been a, a phenomenal drive for the number 11 as he breaks now for the chase. Giving some light to Kika. He's had to work for this one. 
Even though he's all alone now, let's not forget that it was Ian Haycox all over him for uh, quite a few laps. And it was essentially Ian's own mistake that allowed Marco to run free for the remainder of this race as he comes over the jump and gets it woed up now for Griffins. Just as you said, Joe, it's attrition at this track. It happens every time we race here. You have to get really lucky to, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's people sort of look at this race as, as a two-way sort of thing. You know, you can either be up front or wherever you want to be and push hard, or you can just take it easy, you know, and see how your luck goes, you know, and that's what a few drivers have uh, really capitalized on today. Well, last week, he was dubbed by an Australian of all people as Robbo. And I think that is a, a good nickname for him to have here today at an Australian track. Rob Olenek down the Conrad straight for the final time with a monumentous 33 second gap to the next car back. Withstanding the pressure himself, managing to keep the mistakes down to where nobody else could take advantage. This driver in the number one car is gonna take P1 today, the New Englander around Murray's corner and across the start finish line victory for Rob Olenek. Yeah, it wasn't the uh, wasn't the cleanest of drives from Robbo today, was it? Um, but fair play to him. He's, he's got it where it counts now today at the end. Marco Kika now into the chase himself. This Norwegian used to be mid pack, didn't really come into the fact in, in as a factor in most races. And then just in the last two or three seasons has suddenly buckled down, figured out how to make this thing quick. The number three is gonna finish in second today. Behind them, Bill Tyler. Looks like maybe taking a little easy on the final few laps. It's been cut down to two seconds back to Rossi, but that's too little too late. And Bill Tyler, a well-earned podium for him. I think he'll be more than happy with that, won't you, Joe? David Rossi in full fare. Absolutely. Yeah. Great drive. Stayed out of trouble all day. This was certainly a track I got a few podiums by that same method, because <laughs> I never had the pace either to be up towards the front. There you see Tremblay, a top five from second to last on the grid. Just incredible. Bruno going to finish as well with a six as the... Last of the cars string in to the finish line. Yeoman's good for Colin. And uh, for Colin's the last one on the lead lap. So I believe Ang, uh, a lap down, get across the line before him. And that's going to uh, take us to a quick break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. So we'll come back with the official results as well as driver interviews here in just a moment. Before that, on screen, you're going to see all the upcoming races here on the GSRC.
Welcome back to the Mount Panorama Circuit. And for the third time in four races this season, Rob Olenek takes the victory in the Grand Prix Legend Series. He was followed home very distantly by Marco Kika, as you can see, but that doesn't tell the whole story. If you missed the race, it was a big battle for the lead almost the entire way until the penultimate lap. Uh, we'll get to the drivers involved in that in just a second. It was Bill Tyler who picked up the scraps in third as well with David Rossi. A slip-up cost him what could have been a potential podium. He still gets fourth place. And Pascal Tremblay didn't get a qualifying in. That didn't phase him, patiently picking his way through. He winds, winds up for the top five. Andre Bruno behind him in P6. Matt Yeomans, the highest finishing Aussie here at his home circuit with a seventh. He can't be too disappointed having qualified 13th. Don Good. Behind him, P8. Julio for Colin winds up in ninth. And it was Ove Trangray who was third for much of the race. Part of the fight, he rounds out the top 10, Nick. Yeah, uh, such a shame for Ove there. Uh, over in 10th place then. Um, fighting Peter Mikus all the way there. Um, who sadly, really annoyingly had that engine blow. And he even put on the chat that it was down to the um, early downshift. Um, Andrew Rang down in 12th uh, position. Uh, back row Bob, he's in 13th, that's a good finish for him. Uh, not, not very good for Ian Haycox today, down in 14th. Colin Bentley in 15th, Colin Coco in 16th. And the Brian Molitor rounds out the field in 17th place. And we've got our winner ready to talk to us. Uh, he was dubbed Robbo by a Aussie and coming to an Aussie track. Robbo, you have now won. I think you've you've earned your Australian stripes a little bit. Yeah, this is. I think this is definitely one of my favorite tracks too. Today was a tough race. Yeah, all I felt like was the guys behind me are faster, and I'm driving like crap. Like <laughs> I just couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't change that. Like I was like scared coming into the dipper. Like every lap, I'm like, just don't screw it up, and I'd break earlier, and then miss. It was just, I got lucky. It, the one thing I had a good start. Peter had a bad start, and after him coming down the first straight, I was like, well, it's really hard to pass here, so I just gotta not screw up. Yeah, it looked like it was tough to do that because it was pretty hot on the track from what we saw, and. Not just you, but both uh, Peter and Uwe seem to be sliding around, making a lot of errors themselves. Was was it simply a case of who made the fewest mistakes today? Um, fewest and and don't make the bigger one. Um, <laughs> like we all definitely made mistakes. They it's they were battling more. It seemed like to me. Uh, I was trying not to look in my mirror a lot, but it seemed like they were closer together to each other than they were to me, only by a little bit. But it seems like they were. It was affecting their pace more than mine. Um, they definitely were both better than me coming down towards Forest Elbow, and um, they just he didn't quite get a run. He got a run. Peter got a run one time. Um, I've never raced with him before. I think he was just not being aggressive at all, and and um, didn't want to like maybe come into the series and say, "All right, I'm sticking it up the inside <laughs> the second lap in here or something." I don't know, but. I think he was a really good racer, though. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he's going to be one to watch out for. Uh, today is also, of course, the Petit Le Mans that uh, iRacing is running. Do you, Are you with a team this weekend, or are you just focusing on the retro stuff as usual? Yeah, um, I'm not racing today. The Dirty Dork's racing. Phil and Jamie are doing, um, they're running the DP. Um, I think a lot of the 49 guys are running the race today, too. I think Uwe is in the race. I just didn't do this one. I got some other stuff I got to do right after this. So I, I just couldn't do it today, but I've never done Petit Le Mans. I kind of want to do it. Trek's tough, like in multi-class, as we know from Camel. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's some tricky places where uh, you don't want to uh, throw it away trying to pass other cars. Well, again, uh, congratulations. Unless Mick has anything for you. Uh, this has uh, been a phenomenal race to watch. Mick, do you have any questions? Yeah, I just wanted to ask, Rob, um, do you actually use your F3 screen when you're in these battles? Or, or I mean, I was watching you there and I was just thinking to myself, God, he's got to be looking in his mirrors all the time, you know, and and really worrying about the guys catching up and all the rest of it, you know. Do you use your F3 screen at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah, looking at it way too much. <laughs> looking in the mirror yeah. way too much. <laughs> Doing exactly right. what you said. I definitely. It's so much easier to chase somebody than it is to to be in front. 
Yeah, I don't know definitely. why. It really is. Like, you, yeah. you just, you can, even when you're on the brakes earlier, you're faster. Like, I don't know. It's just, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's tough to be up there. You don't want to, you don't want to screw the race up from the lead. You know, it's different when you're, you're kind of trying to get the lead. You can be, you know, a little more, less cautious, you know, and, and run closer to the limit. But when you're in the lead, you're like, oh, I'm an imbecile if I screw this one up. Yeah. But, <laughs> You know. Uh, yeah, I know, mate. I know, yeah. Great win today, Rob. Well done. Thanks, Mike. Oh, sorry, Robbo. Robbo. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> that comes back from being a kid. I used to get that as a kid all the time. I used to get the big O, and I'm not big. So it's kind of funny. But <laughs> oh, It's going right. to be for the rest of the season now, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> we, we've got a few for him now. But uh, that was our winner, Rob Olenek, who took his third win of the season out of four races today. And that's going to close us up as well. So, of course, we want to give a big thank you to the Lotus 49 community for bringing us back for another season of coverage. And also, a thank you goes to iRacing for putting us on the iRacing eSports Network. Make sure and subscribe. All you got to do is click on the big red subscribe button and you won't miss a moment here on IESN. Thanks to the companies that provide the software and the hardware for our broadcast are listed here on your screen. And additional thanks go to June Lalonde, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work. Thanks to the team today, Mick, Sean, and Dougie. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at globalsimracingchannel.com. We're also on social media. Our Twitter is at GSR Channel, Facebook, Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram is GSRC underscore Graham. Next race, we're just not hopping over that far away, up to Japan. It'll be Suzuka. Saturday, October 12th at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. We have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard. We'll see you on the track.